Hello, good people. Welcome to the last episode of You Really Ought to Finish That Damn Propeller by Now. And amazingly, I think I might. I got home from Toronto about four and a half hours ago, and uh, after the usual perfunctory hellos quickly and throw your clothes in the washer and everything, I came outside and I'm now going to have to issue another apology, of course, because I just thought, well, you know, I'll do a bit of smoothing off and I wonder if I can do a bit of the leading edge. And actually, without having the distraction of the camera, I spent about 45 minutes on one leading edge and that's the end result. And I have to say I'm quite pleased with it. So I thought I'd set the camera up again on the bench and uh, before I forget, because I've only been awake for about 27 hours, before I forget what I'm doing, we'll get the other leading edge done and then maybe tomorrow finish off, get the tips done, get it sanded off finely and uh, varnished and that'll be that. We can get the Praga engine running, which of course was the whole purpose of this painful escapade. You might well notice that the propeller position on the bench has changed again. I moved it to a corner, so I had a bit more space to work around it. I don't know whether I mentioned that in the previous episode. And in fact, I got that idea from Al Schubert, who also wrote a book about making propellers. It's available as a PDF. I'll try and put a link to it in the description. I do have it as a PDF, and I guess I could email it, although I don't know how big the file is. Anyway, I'll try and put a link, because I found a link on the internet. Anyway, he had a similar arrangement. In fact, he also had a arrangement on the back of his pickup truck, so he could make them outside, which was quite a good idea, and he sort of hack away in the yard at his propellers. Now, I've been writing down all manner of useful stuff on the blank as I go. One of the things I noticed, actually, when I started doing the leading edge on the other on the other blade, was if I broke this down into two different things, effectively, so these all sand off afterwards, I broke it into three sections. Again, Eric Clutton in his book said that anything from 30% inwards, one could sort of ignore and just blend it in which I think is probably very good, good advice. And if you look at the blade here from about 60% outwards, there's actually not that much to blend in anyway. It's actually quite thin. It's less than a quarter of an inch at the tip. It's probably, well, no more than three eighths there. And that looks like about three quarters. So I treated it on the other one. I treated these as three slightly separate things, although, I sort of did it all at once. Dale in Alabama will be delighted because this bit especially I filed. I was thinking about a spoke shave, but I don't have one. I made a while back a draw knife. I saw someone make a very nice one out of a file on YouTube. I made a really rubbish one in about five minutes. It's actually not bad, but being a metal worker, I'm so used to filing things that I just feel more comfortable using a file. Anyway, I think the first thing I did was take a bit off there with the plane. I'll sound like a real expert now. I'm trying to keep the plane from wobbling around, so I just sort of keep the same angle on it. Amazing how it brings that curve around quickly with the file. It's really good.
really is almost there. We're good up to about there now, apart from just blending the back in a little bit. I've put it in the bench vise now. It's got some packing here, some nice thick card, so it won't mark from the jaws at all. The reason I've done that is to blend this in and be able to sort of get in there as well. I just measured the thickness of the tip. It's slightly thicker here by about, well, less than a sixteenth of an inch. The other one was just over seven sixteenths. This is half an inch. So I am going to take a bit more off the back of the blade in a little while. But I want to just start blending this face into the leading edge here. It wasn't a great deal. I know I ran a bevel along it before. That was just, I ran it all the way along anyway, because I know I didn't need that much here. But obviously I need a bit more here, but I, not going to go silly with it. I've got this half round bastard file, which is absolutely superb. Now I really want to get into, into this bit now. curvature on it pretty much all the way now so how's it there it's a very tactile job this just a lot of gently feeling how the shape is is forming Bad. I'm going to put it back on the bench now so I can see what I'm doing there. I'm fairly happy with that. I think um, I've been using an orbital sander, only a cheapo one, but it's great for just sort of tidying up these edges once the filing is sort of reasonably satisfactory. Okay, on this side, the, the blade obviously blends into the hub, and I didn't really draw much of a line. I've actually just got a, a straight line mark there that I used earlier when I was finding that position, which was really to do with marking that bit originally. But obviously I'm going to use the line just as well, and I'm going to blend it so we get a slight curve. We know we're sort of flat profile up to about 35%, which is somewhere around there, although it doesn't have to be exact. It was only an about. So I think I'm going to try and get all that off with a file. This inner portion of the blade is just about done. It's really just titivation now, and then just to blend the uh, tip. Again, we're, there's our 30%, there's our 60%, so we're, we're done up to about 50% so far. There's a few marks here, and I need to just flat file the root there into the, the hub. I did the other one, just using a finer new file.
Well, that's the tips rounded off nicely. It's a bit thicker at the end than I expected. Probably an actress and bishop joke in there somewhere, but it's fine. Doesn't really matter. Other end worked out the same. If you're wondering why I used a hacksaw, it wasn't just for my good friend Dale's benefit. It's actually using a hacksaw with a nice fine blade sort of minimizes the chances of splitting the wood out as you go through. So that only took about 10 minutes to do. That's very quick. So the next thing is to make some apparatus for balancing it. I had a ferret round in the woodshed. Didn't find anything nasty and uh, got some beech log, turned it down on the lathe, made some bungs. Now I've actually made them not conical. They're a nice push fit. I decided conical was a waste of time. So they're a really nice push fit into the into the hub with no wibbly wobbly at all. And if I get a piece of studding, I, I drilled them 25, I don't know, 64 or whatever, which is just over three eighths. And this is a piece of 10 mil studding, which is a very nice push fit through the whole lot. So you end up with a bit of studding sticking out, nothing's loose at all. And then I can stick it on some parallels. Now I did measure the bench, it slopes ever so slightly, but I think for finding the heavier blade, that doesn't matter in the least. It's only a tiny amount. And I'm sure someone will tell me I need to use knife edges for this. I think the only thing on a knife edge at the moment is Hugh Edwards' career. If he was a real man, he'd head off to the study with a bottle of whiskey and a revolver, but there we are. Standards of public life these days. It looks like this is the heavier blade. So I'll turn it over. And see if that is indeed the case. It appears to be so. So I think I'll take some meat off this blade and uh, see where we go from there. Well I've just put it together again and the blade is still a little bit heavy but it's not actually resting on the on the bench there it's just heavy and if i bring the other blade so it's resting and let go it might thump down but it comes back and it's not touching still so it's still heavy but only by a gnat's crotchet so let's turn it around and try it the other way That sort of takes care of the minute amount of slope on the table. When I've got it really close, I will actually just jack these up slightly. And if I just put a piece of card under one end, it'll be enough. So heavy blades at the far end. If I put this one there, let go. Yes, it's not even bumping back to the bumping back to the table. It's still sitting slightly low at the other end, so it's a tiny bit heavy. Well, after a bout of enthusiastic sanding, the other blade is now the heavier blade. Again, let's turn it over. There we are. So this is now the heavier blade. So I think a little bit of sanding treatment on this blade as well especially just around the tip, which is a bit thick and chunky. So I think I'm just going to remove some meat with the sander and then we'll try it again. Mm -hmm. 
Right, well that's now balancing. The, uh, the two wooden things are level. There's four layers of cereal packet and a hotel key card under each one. Checked with the spirit level both ways. So they're level and the prop seems to sit level. I'll turn it round again though. It really is as near as damn it. If anything, that blade is just a bit heavier. Um, this one definitely was a moment ago. But obviously, I've judiciously sanded the tip, so I might just sand the tip on that one again. I mean, we can go for this tip for tat balancing for hours on end. Now, I'm heading off into uncharted water here because Eric doesn't do this in his book. He just balances the propeller horizontally. But I've seen Elena doing this at Culver Propellers. And, uh, well, it just seemed quite an interesting test. Again, I know I'm attaching it to some rough ripping two-cylinder lump. Um, and I suppose one would remove a little bit of meat off the hub if necessary to balance it. I might have to watch some more videos about propeller balancing. There's that bump in that cable there. So it suggests it's a bit heavier on this side of the hub, I suppose. So say that's heavier there. I'm trying to remember that. I'll turn it up the other way. See what happens now. I can't quite remember. Yeah, so it's suggesting the hub is a little heavier there. Well, it's probably worth me taking a little bit of weight off the... Uh, off the hub and seeing if I can't reduce that a little bit. So I'll try that. Well, I've filed and sanded away at what I thought was the high side and now it's actually balancing. I think it's all beginner's luck. This was the high side or the heavy side rather. Um, still slightly over. It's so easy to take small amounts of material off though. See, I just ran the flat file across there. I could keep doing this for hours on end so I'm just going to give it one final check and then I think it's time to sort of titivate dollops and varnish on it and call it a day it's it's so close I mean you know, you can balance propellers just by dolloping more varnish on one end so I don't quite know to what degree I need to take this it really is well it's there really anyway so tidy up and varnish that's the propeller as near as damn it finished. I think it looks a bit darker on camera than it does in real life. If you're wondering why it's done with this walnut stain, well, two reasons. One, I had about of a third of the tin left. Secondly, I did a honeydew recently in the house, matching in some uh, desktop with uh, an existing desktop, and I used that stuff and it was brilliant, and it covered a thousand sins. And there have been at least a thousand sins with this propeller, so worth having a bit of a cover up. Anyway, I mean, I could have gone on with this for weeks, trying to titivate and titivate, but what I really want to do is get the Praga engine running. So that's done. I'll finish this series with the book. This book is absolutely terrific. There's 56 pages, 
and it's fair to say without Eric's book I wouldn't have had the confidence to have gone ahead and made a propeller. There's lots of other stuff on the internet, there's lots of films, but a simple book like this that one can dip in and out of and has simple descriptions and nothing that it isn't understandable has been absolutely terrific and it was all about confidence. There's one thing I glossed over rather when making this, apart from glossing over all the sins, and that was marking the blade out. And in fact, I had an email from a chap called Jerry who had rather a lot of questions about marking the blade out. They're very sensible questions. And of course, when I marked the blade out, I marked it without the camera running because I just wanted to carefully work through it. I do want to make another video about marking the propeller blades out before cutting. And I would have made a, another sort of half a propeller, but tomorrow I'm actually going to pick up another engine. So I think we're going to have another series on rebuilding an engine, making a propeller and getting it going. There won't be six parts of making a propeller though, there are probably one or two. And what I'll do, because it'll be so much quicker the second time, because I've learned so much this time from the wonderful book and just getting on and doing it, that I won't do everything again. I will merely cover the things I didn't cover very well this time, and a few bits I learned along the way. So that engine will be in the back of the car tomorrow. I'm not telling you what it is yet. We'll wait till the Praga's running, and then uh, we'll have another series, as I say, on getting a vintage engine going, making a propeller for it, and having it roaring away on a test rig. It'll keep us amused. Anyway, as always, thank you for watching.